I always say that the Ten Commandments of a Kufuado, Ten Commandments of a Kufuado, the greatest of all, just as the Ten Commandments of God we worship, who said, Respect thy God that created you. In the Kufuado's Ten Commandments, the greatest commandment is the consolidation of the banks that has given a solid foundation to our economy. Unfortunately, our colleagues and friends, party members, are afraid even to talk about it. We should be proud of it, the consolidation of the banks that has given us stable economy. Why do I say that, members? Akufuadu took over an economy that was in shambles. First of all, I like giving practical examples so that we're not going to be seen as bookish. But what actually happened? In 2015, in 2016, I'll take the 2016 April when President Mahama came to Parliament to address us, the state of the nation, and he said, the Security Exchange Bank of Ghana has not helped the country because they've allowed some fake microfinance institutions to collapse our economy. And he mentioned God is love, and uh, one other one, they are all in BA, DKM. My question is, what did President Mahama see that time for him to be prophetic? What did he see? He's the president. He knew all the transactions that were going on in 2015-2016. He did mention only the microfinance and savings and loans, but the big banks, the commercial banks were worse. I start with my sister-in-law. I took her to China. I gave her money to buy these, you know, weave on whatever. She came, she started selling, opened an account with GN Bank. Then she goes out there to a drawman, just thousand cities. And the bank, to date, I don't know if they are going to pay here tomorrow. GN Bank could not give thousand cities to this young lady. How do you turn around to blame Ekufuado? How do you turn around and blame Ekufuado? Did Ekufuado give instructions to Indom not to pay my sister in law? No. And the question is, where did the money go? And whatever we do to help this nation, our country is so polarized that we always criticize even good things for the country. Why I say that is that people are condemning, we are not bold to praise Akufuado and his government, especially the finance minister, for taking bold decisions to consolidate these banks. Recently, if you've heard or listened to the news, what they are talking about, GN, this same GN Bank, in two years that he established his bank in Chicago, two years, monies that were transferred from Ghana, the poor country, to that rich country, is $138 million. And my sister-in-law, 1,000 cities, she cannot be paid. Please, give her a Kufuado a big clap. <laughs> we take Heritage Bank. Heritage Bank, the stated capital to establish a bank in 2015-2016 was 120 million Ghana cities. What Heritage Bank did was that he deposited 30 million in his agriculture account. 
this 30 million, as soon as he deposits it, he gets a bank statement, which is 30 million. He takes the 30 million, about 29 million, to Sarago, another company of his. And this 29 million, he will take a receipt or the bank statement. When we add it to the 30 years, 59. He takes 28 million out of the 29 to his wife's account. 28 million. And he, they will give her a bank statement. Then she will take 27 million to another account and give a statement that he has 120 million Ghana cities in his account. And therefore, he's qualified for the license. This is given to him. What it means is that a money that should be retained at the Bank of Ghana, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Because the actual stated capital is 30 million. So when you strike it, the 100%, which is equal to 120 million, the 30 million is 25%. 25%. So he has used 25% of what is required of him to establish a bank to get the bank license and start operating. Right there, there's a shortfall. What it means is that he is going to use depositors' money. And the unfortunate thing is that when they get the depositors' money, instead of lodging some in the Bank of Ghana's account to shore up whatever shortages in, in the next whatever years. These people will now begin to give to companies that are also independent of his bank. That is how come many people lost their money. When you go to Unibank. Unibank had over 23. In Dom's own is about 60 companies. Unibank had about 23 companies. And all these companies, the money is deposited in Unibank, he transfers them to other companies of his. And whatever he takes to that uh, is an independent company and therefore the money does not belong to Unibank. It belongs to his company. That is how come depositors could not get their money from them. You need trust. Again, you need trust. Talking plenty. They had other foreign companies that they were transferring the money to. You see, how can you live in a country where the mistrust is so high, even banks that were supposed to protect our savings were diverting our funds? So for the president to see what was going on in 2015-2016, Capital Bank, the guy who was giving tongues on air, Paul, that bank is my baby, Paul. A criminal like that sitting on TV speaking in tongues. It tells you that all the tongues in those churches, you are wasting your time. They are all fake. They are all fake. Because Capital Bank also used the same approach. He didn't have the state of capital required. And he gave them the license. So they were using depositors' money. And the monies that were being deposited at Capital Bank, he was certain companies in Zimbabwe, South Africa. And he's lost all those companies. That is how come we cannot get our money. Come to microfinance and savings and loan. See, I deal finance. You go to his house, he has about 17 cars, and a friend of mine was asking, why do you have so many? <laughs> I love cars love cars poor people's deposits 
you use them to buy cars. Poor people's money. He built a property at Adade you needed to see. Opulence. I like good things, so I don't have a problem. If I work hard and the money does not belong to anybody and it's my money, no problem. But you cannot take people's deposits and buy cars when we are out. <laughs> I love cars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So what MPP government did in 2017 was that we realized without banks in this country the economy was going to go to run to a, a, a short straight will collapse will come to a halt so what Ophuriata did was that said let us raise the state capital and we have over 49 or so <laughs> commercial banks in this small country here microfinance 130 something savings and loans so he said okay raise the state of capital from 120 to 400 million that is when we saw that wow all these monies in the books are not there and one thing i remember very well marine drive is just here where they have birth and death or whatever, that land overlooking the sea, from Independence Square all the way to Kwame Nkrumah, it's around 400 acres. A guy took a loan from Unibank, and the, the amount was $13 million. $13 million to redevelop the marine drive. He couldn't come on. When they were checking Professor Dufo, uh, Dr. Dufo that his assets with all the monies that he's taken from depositors, we want to know what he did with it. It's on record. I have the document that he valued marine drive. The 13 million he took from there, he gave to the guy. You know how much he quoted to the government as his asset? $250 million. $250 million. That's what Dr. Lufo recorded. So when I started hitting him, then the guy came out. He said, my brother, please, it is only $13 million I took from the man. <laughs> $13 million. But in his books, for the government to assess his worth, if it worth paying depositors money and collecting whatever investment he has, that is how much he quoted. So you ask yourself, where is the money? So Kenoforiata decided that look, if we don't consolidate these banks and cushion it, the country will run to a halt. That's a prudent management. I'll give you one example. Obama inherited similar economy from George Bush Jr. Banks were collapsing in America. The Relange, Water Chase, City, all those banks were collapsing. He had to pump in money for these banks. That is why you see America the way it is today. And that's exactly what Kenufuriata and MPP government has done for this country. So to stabilize the economy, <laughs> thank you, to stabilize the economy, government needed to pay the depositors. So all those monies that were siphoned outside the country from different accounts the government decided to cushion the banks you don't get fiscal cash but your money is on record that you saved so much with this bank it is still there microfinance similar thing happened but they they've paid them 
all their monies. Savings and loans. And the total amount is 21.5 billion Ghana cities. 21.5 billion Ghana cities. If you don't know the achievement of the Kufuado, this is the cardinal. That is why I say the first commandment. Now, the basic question I ask is, assuming our banking sector were doing well, do you know what we could have done with 21.5 billion? Do you know what we could have done with 21.5 billion? Because they messed up the banking system or the banking sector, we didn't have any choice except to cushion the banks. If not, the economy will not run. That is why today you have stable economy. Now, another achievement out of this is that we took over January 7th, 2017. By April 17th, Ghana had won herself out of IMF harsh conditionalities. Because of prudent management, because we put in 21.5 billion, now we could tell IMF, look, we are a sovereign country. You cannot detect that. And the condition, my brother in NDC, I know by the time I finish, he will take it out. <laughs> because any country that goes to IMF for assistance means you have failed your economy and your country. That is why you go to IMF for assistance. Now, the harsh condition they gave Ghana was that you should freeze employment. You cannot borrow more than 1.5 billion a year. That is, when Mahama took us to IMF, worsens the situation for us. That is why your senior brothers here, maybe you were there, they started forming Graduate Unemployed Association. God, the government could not employ. Government could not employ. Now, I can tell you, migration, about 12,000 people are there. Military, about 10,000. Police, about 22,000. They have about, I think, 16. All of them, just under four years, because we were cut off. We didn't want to do anything with IMF in terms of their harsh conditionalities. That is why we were able to recruit. That is why from 2017 to December 2020, MPP had employed 2,110,000 workers in this country. Two million. You have the NAPCO, 100,000. You have other employment from the agri sector. And it is all because of the prudent management of our financial sector. So, before the free SHS, if we had not managed at the financial sector very well, there is no way, I tell you today, we are talking of free SHS. It's very great. But without stable economy, there was no way we were going to get money to fund the free SHS. So the basis and the foundation of our solid economy is because of the financial sector. Prudent management of the financial sector. The recapitalization of the banks. That is why our poor brothers and nephews are going to school today. I am the greatest beneficiary of free SHS. You know why. And I said that in Parliament before I could finish. Colleagues were getting up from the other side. Why I say, sit down and listen to me. <laughs> why you have benefited more than any parent is that every MP, whether NDC or MPP, you wake up in the morning. And 
parents have lined up with their kids coming for school fees. When I see the queue, then my heart goes up, beating. This time, when I sleep, I sleep because I wake up in the morning, my, my gate is see-through, and I don't see any long queue there. So, the applause shouldn't come to me. You should go to Kenofuria time. They've done the vice president. They have done marvelously well. And again, minister was here. I don't know if he mentioned this. Because I came late. He has started. One key thing I wanted to hear from him is the state of our educational system in 2009 to 2016. And I'm surprised. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. Like my lady said, education gives you a foundation to success. I say a foundation. But if you don't build on the foundation, you are not going to be successful. So it's individual thing. Don't be intimidated by professors and whatever. Because for a professor, and again, a mother, to make such a statement that Ghana did well in West Africa Examination Council because they cheated. No, because of her selfish interest, she has disgraced the whole country. Not to only Ghana. Minister was limiting it to Ghana. The whole West Africa. I don't know the president of West Africa Examination Council. I would have called for all the papers of Ghana. Let's remark it again. Because of the statement from that professor. How can you call her? She's a professor. I was going to... You see, Mosi Manoya Manoya. My friend, you should like good things. If you like good things, you do good things for your country. This woman... I met her at uh, VIP then. You should be an Eshempa. I asked. No. You know, I just ask. You are laughing. I'm very, very serious about this. You know, we're going to show you a Shenopa. Asambe pa. I did a bear pa. And you fell with Ghana. Yeah. Nani trins. So I had to say, dread logo. Bibisa, pesre, pesre. Yeah, rust down. Ah, very my old fashioned tea. I'm telling you, I saw and say, ah, Minister of Education, who show out the co conference in <laughs> No, I'm serious. Look, Obi a part the panel. Obi a part the panel. On what me yema at the par as also. No nima the par. Have been at the papa by country ya. No wonder in her tenure. We have 23 percent. 23. And have you forgotten the fight between the first and second lady and the teacher or where headmistress at Koforidia Kukurantumi? Yeah. Chalk, chalk, common chalk. And the woman fled up, insulting, chalk. Under this woman, 92,000 teachers were recruited, worked for two years. She couldn't pay them. And all they did was that they'll give you three months out of the two years. And she got nerves. <laughs> yeah, she got nerves to tell the whole world that Ghana cheated. And you see, I was born and bred in a, at a St. Dompe, a foam pao. You guys, you are lucky. Now, almost all the rural areas, the villages, you have electricity and this uh, pipe born water. I don't know what they call it. What is it? Boreholes. We were carrying power. Going to the riverside. In the morning, you fetch water, come, you go back, you bath. Then you take another one before you go and cook. 
in the afternoon we come back when we here. This time we come out with the groundnut vinegar bottle. This one is hot. Then we put dry coconut like this. And she show now we cook. Meanwhile, when we went to Adisadi College, we saw some nice cars coming there. You know, Charlie, it was a acquire foam. We do have from now, from Fosu to Cape Coast. Now is 45 minutes. It took me about four hours from Fosu to Cape Coast because the road was so bad. Now we do a palm tree, one foot, my new nine foot brown. Aquabi, who was Aquabi crossing me. Come here. What's your name? Say Kwame Japan. Where are you from? Asin Dumpem. Where is Asin Dumpem? On T. Bita. Asin Dumpem. Timika Asin Dumpem on T. We'll see a foam. A foam. So, that time, why I love this free SHS is that I have three guys who are smarter than me in class. Philip, Nyamiche, and Efisa. They all passed common entrance. The parents could not take them to secondary school. And Philip, very smart guy. When we were in Form 3, we were the 12 guys in Form 3. But he had 100% in every subject. The teacher couldn't control the guy. So they decided to promote him. Not to Form 2, to Form 3. I have to tell you the truth. Obayo D first, straight. <laughs> Philip was still first. But the guy could not go to secondary school. I'm telling you. And that time, we didn't know anybody to give him Cocoa Board scholarship or whatever. So these three guys did not. He went through that. He's our head teacher who saw a talent in him. And decided to support him to go to Accrocre Training College. Stephen Yamiche, up to now, did not go to it. But they had two of them, Philip and Stephen, had distinction. So if there was a free SHS that time, do you know where these guys will be? Do you know where they will be? So please, it's a great achievement. And any person in life, the greatest gift any man can give you is education. The greatest gift any man can give you is education. So don't let us underestimate the achievements of MPP. You should be proud that you belong to MPP political party. You see, I have traveled far and wide. So if a child does well, I commend him, all right, but I don't go there to say. That boy from Adesu is not the only village boy who got eight A's. When you go to Asin, I come for it. The school, I built it. It's a new school. I built it. I built six classrooms with my own money. Then the assembly also decided to build another six classroom. So the chiefs, the two chiefs, I put it in the middle of two towns. Emya and Nassim are comforted. Decided, no, we have two classroom blocks, six, six. So let's turn it into secondary school. And today, somebody from Asin got eight A's. <laughs> somebody from Obri Yabua got seven A's and a B. The message is simple. It's brains that we have. It is not where you come from. But the opportunity that is given to you that will determine whether you are God's creation or not. That is the gospel truth. Yeah. It's the opportunity that is given to you that determines whether you are also a creation of God. Why I say that is that. See, my children, 
one is standing there, that's my second, sitting there, my second born in America. You know, when they are going to school, you know, pick up, she, she, you know, they will call. She will say, I mean, the first, I like good shoes. You know, this is Beluti. <laughs> Even the slippers is Beluti. Because from day one, I was born till 16 years. I didn't wear shoe. 16. And when I wanted to, I wanted my father to buy me a shoe. He traveled to London. I didn't know. He didn't tell me. He said he's going to Accra. Not knowing he was going to London. And he was deported. <laughs> he was deported. Me, I didn't know. And where my father was a teacher, all his friends were teachers. So, teachers and their children. But that time, Mamu you. That time, I'll go to a friend's house. Then he will go and bring his Christmas gift that has been bought for him. Oh, my father bought me a shoe. We were four guys from teachers' quarters, I will say. Three of them, their parents bought them shoes. My father had gone to try his luck and was deported. I didn't know. He came, and I will never forget that because. I don't know, Reverend Mono Moyini Kakra, Kumasi Home Store. That was the first time they opened Kumasi Home Store. So, come everywhere, there was no shoe. So, I decided, I'm going to go to the house for the house. I'm going to go to 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 Some ladies in the house convinced me to go home. And when I went, they gave me goose laughs and sent me back to my village. That is how come I finished it. I went to Asidom then straight to Asada College. So when my auntie saw my clothes, they were in a plastic bag. She got furious. That time my mother was in Accra. She got furious insulting my father. And the next day, she put me in a train to Accra here. When my mother saw my things dirty, she started crying and asked me, what do you want? So I said, shoe. <laughs> yeah, my shoe, no, I say some requirement to, because of the slab. Way simple. It's $1,800. Or <laughs> so the slab. The slab that they gave me, my father gave me, I said to myself, one day, I will be somebody. Yes. You know, so please, don't take these achievements kindly at all. What Free SHS has done to some of our nephews, our nieces, our grandchildren, our brother and sister. So please, be proud of yourself. Uganda and Kenya have come here Maybe you didn't give the minister time or he was in no, a hurry to go. He would have given you all these details. I've come to understand how we implemented this free SHS. So please, be proud of yourself that you belong to a great political party. Now, no jobs. No jobs. What, what MPP, MPP did, did in, in between, between 2017 and 2019, 19, I would say 2019 because of COVID, three years, MPP has helped private sector business entrepreneurs to establish businesses. And before the election, 232 companies under various stages, 76 were fully operational. Now the question is, if every government in four years, if not the COVID, definitely all the 232 companies will be working. Now you let's take it for argument's sake that 76 every four years from Rollins time 76 companies established every four years. From 1981, 
calculate and multiply it by the years and you get the number of factories in this country. So 232 factories within four years. Brothers and sisters, it's a great achievement. And let me see those of you from Central Region here. Good. Central Region. Uh, do you know Potin? Potin. Do you know the poultry farm over there? Who knows Potin? What is happening there? <laughs> see? There's a poultry farm that was completely collapsed. Now Potin Poultry Farm is revived. It's working. When you are going to that, in fact, that place is very close to Winneba, but they say it's Gumwa East, where the guy is using potato for flour and other things. It's a new factory that the loan that was given to him to establish that is 14 million Ghana cities. And do you know the number of people he employs? Now, just as you pass that uh, factory on your left, you see the Chinese company, the paper product, also on your left. You see, a lot of things are going on. Who knows uh, this, uh, what's his name? There's a poultry farm. Okay, one at Sepasi in Ashanti region. Two Daco farms and one other man from something. All their poultry farms have been revived. It's working. It's working. See? So we have 76 already operational. I've not cross checked from January to May what others have done. But I can assure you, our factory is coming up. We're going to commission it in July. Cassava starch. Uh, when you go to Atebu Mountain, you will see. We're coming up with different, in fact, all that I'm saying, my personal businesses that I'm doing, uh, is not even counted under one district, one factory. Because I'm not taking any loan from government. No banks. At least I have five projects. One is completed. I'm waiting for the Dubai people who said they brought the in machines to come and commission it. Others are also in various stages. That's why I always have severe pains here. <laughs> thinking. We are pushing the economy. And it should be employment, employment, employment. So <coughs> Factories, factories, factories. Industries, industries, industries. That is what MPP is doing for this country. Let's take the energy sector. You see, in 2016, you, know, you all witnessed it. The number of hours we've been here there would have been flat power fluctuations, light stuff, and you hear generators. I say they sing chorus. Some of them are brand new, silent. Others you hear that they are old. Is that what we are experiencing today? Um, am I free? So soon. We have forgotten where we're coming from. Just four years ago, you know that you know, if you know the number of businesses that collapsed because of light offs, parents lost a lot of money because you have to buy diesel. Your fridge will get spoiled. All the electrical appliances will get spoiled. You have to buy a new one. All these are costs. 
It's not what we are experiencing today. These are basic things that we don't appreciate. But in 2015, 2016, what Guineans went through with stable power, consistent power, so soon we have forgotten. It is not by magic. It's through prudent management. And I tell you, young man, before you leave here, I know you will change. <laughs> you know what? When this power shortage started, prudent idea by President Mahama that we need big, big generators, whatever, to start these years, power producers. They signed 17 agreements with different power producers. And they call something take or pay. And the take or pay means if I produce, whether you need it or not, you have to accept it. You have to pay me. That was the agreement they signed. So as I speak today, Ghana pays two billion dollars excess power that we don't need. Two billion dollars power that we don't need. When you go to Ghana Gas, same thing. We are paying almost two billion dollars. Same agreement take or pay that we don't need. How can you, how can you look at this poor country and sign such an agreement? Two billion. Do you know what two billion dollars can do for this poor country? But if you don't pay them, if you don't pay them, there will be no power. Even the little they have to give you, they will give it to you. If you terminate the agreement, they take you to international or whatever for arbitration. You pay huge sums of money. That is what MPP government is battling with. Huge sums of money. Now I ask, if you say Amari, did Amari just come to this country? No. He was led by NDC member. I want to tell you something. Amari did not jump from Dubai to Accra. He was led by somebody into this country. So the shareholders, they don't think of you and me. It is only what they will get. Akosombo, three cents per kilowatt hour. They signed agreement as high as 17 cents cent per kilowatt hour. Yes, the cheapest was 11. That is why the cost of electricity is so high. When you take the banking system, the loans that they give to Ghanaians, the most expensive one after the loans is the cost of electricity. Because some individuals, some greedy Ghanaians, partner with these companies and taking shares at the expense of the poor people. And we have to live with it because they have signed the agreement. No. So, be proud that you belong to this great party. <laughs> With all this, paying these monies, what the government has done is that ECG, whatever collection you make every week, not a month, a week, 77% is allocated to the power producers. That is why you have stable power, if you don't know. It's not by magic. That is why we have stable power. 77% revenue collection of ECG goes to the independent power producers. How much is left for ECG to operate with? That is the reality we live with. 23%. 23% ECG, his collection. He takes only 23 because 77 is given to the power producers. 
You remember, if you had followed me for long, in 2016, I challenged them that your problem, it is not anything technical. It is financial. If you followed me in 2016, I told them, it is not technical. It's financial. You are not paying the people. That is why we are facing or confronted with that power fluctuations and doom so, as we call it. And when we came and decided to pay them, we are not able to pay all, but at least we get the power. And it's still very, very expensive. Let me tell you, young men and women here, do you know a company called ENI? Sometimes our politicians, we have to lash them too. Yeah, when they see, ah, excuse my language today because I'm pissed. When you look at the agreement, you ask yourself, you am paying for them kuskuana. Honestly, gas, gas, gas. They signed with a company called ENI. The most expensive gas in the world that you pay is Ghana. Signed by ENI, Italian company. How? Nine cent gas. The most annoying part is that Talo is a Sankofa, whatever. They can produce more oil. Crude oil. They can produce more. But because of the agreement with ENI, they cannot produce that oil and get more gas. How? How can you sign such an agreement if you love your nation? This is what MPP is confronted with. And you see, they will take them, confirm classic four ministers, via a domitra play, or call you DDF, sign agreement, you know, just like that, without thinking of the country, without thinking of the future of the youth. You commit us like that. And we can't do anything. And, you know, we are afraid to talk. They are afraid to criticize international. I will criticize them. IFC is another bogus world institution. They funded this project. So any time government will resist, then they threaten. If IFC is for World Bank, it means World Bank is not going to deal with you. That is the gospel truth. Let them see it. I don't give a damn about that. It's my country that we have to protect. Yes, IFC. They supported E and I to sign that bogus agreement against this country. And now our hands are tied. We can't do anything. And you are telling me fix it. Fix your fucking attitude. Excuse me. Excuse my language. Because it's so annoying. If you have the facts that I have, you kill somebody. <laughs> Honestly. You kill somebody. And you wonder how they are able to sign such an agreement without thinking of the future of this country. Because of what they will get today with their family. How long are you going to live on that? It's three scores and ten. The rest is all blessings from God. What you have? TB Joshua. And he didn't see dead coming. Didn't he see dead coming? Didn't he? So why are you afraid to die? That you sacrifice your country like that? Young men and women, if you see the agreement, you collapse. But they sign it. It's binding. Contract. We can't do anything. They have the big muscles. You tiny country with a population of 30 million going to fight IFC is a subsidiary of World Bank. You are going to fight. Where will you be? That is the problem we have. So be proud that all these we have survived. We are moving. It's a great party with great thinkers. Except that sometimes we have foolish ones in MPP too. When we some foolish professors, they can talk trash like a tifa. Talk trash. Now, don't wait me. Now, do you listen to me this evening, what I'm going to do to him. 
Mama, if he makes such a statement, why are you here? If he made that statement, why are you a Tesco member? Why? Why are you a Tesco member? Why should you go to the villages and campaign? I say, Professor, my ass. <laughs> no, it's so painful that you sacrifice your life, defend a party, a party's cause, and you go there, they look at you. They brought from ground zero. Was it political or whatever? Neutrality. Neutrality. If you are neutral, why would you accept this position under MPP and not under NDC? Because you qualify. Professor Tefa, if you don't know his secret, when we won this election, when we won this election, he filed to be a Speaker of Parliament. Why didn't he file under NDC to be a Speaker of Parliament? To be neutral? That's foolishness. Yeah, it's foolishness. You file to be a Speaker of Parliament under MPP party. Yes. Go and ask J. Mensah Bonsu if I'm lying. Ask J. Mensah Bonsu if I'm lying. Nipa 5 crore the 4. Please. Now, we, we, look, they, they say certain things to discourage us. They make us look so stupid for sacrificing our life for this party. I don't have a problem if you employ M NBC. He's a Ghanaian. I don't have a problem. But I don't expect you to come and tell me that the president says, mm, President Dakai, mm, I know the man he won't say that, but if he said that, you'll pay for it. I swear to God. <laughs> yes, I know President will not say that. But if indeed he said that, you pay for it. Yes. If I show you messages from the youth, the way they are so annoyed, insulting us, you have no idea who caused it. Now, common sense. I must say PAD. PAD. Me. You're my degree. My qualification, QBE, qualified by experience. <laughs> qualified by experience. Even if President confides in me that this is the kind of public sector I want to leave behind, I will not go in public and quote that the President says, Wow! And you know, the way this, they, they call them critical thinkers. MPP critical thinkers. You know, my hashtag, you know. The Kufu says we should not be employed. The Kufu says we should not be employed. Our own party boys are ridiculing us because of such statements. And it kills my soul. You ask yourself, I want you to add the, you know, Tescon. 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 You got it. Yeah, little motivation. Little motivation. How can we just go there, work, work, work? Oh, yeah, they talk as he said MPP. We don't even have educated people in MPP. The statement the man made implies that we don't have educated people in MPP. You know? It's sad. But when you look at all these few, few, few problems or challenges we have, I'll tell you, MPP, we have done marvelously well. The agri sector. Agri sector. Look at what we have done in this country. Today, if you don't know, I'm telling you, today, MPP, from 2018 till now, we have trade surplus. Through agriculture, we have trade surplus. 
economic students here, you know what I mean by trade surplus. It means when your exports exceed your imports. And from 2018, in 2019, the trade surplus was $1.3 billion. Yes. 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 Be proud that you belong to this political party. We have done well. You know, when, when I hear people talking about fix it and we are suffering in this country, I ask, ah, do these people remember where we were and where we are today? Even under COVID in 2020, we still had trade surplus of $759 million. What if your imports exceeds your export, you are in trouble. It means there's a stress on your foreign exchange. So the dollar, the pound will keep on going up, going up, going up, and you use more CDs to go and buy few dollars. When your exports exceeds imports, there's less stress on your dollar the foreign exchange because now we exported more goods into world market than we imported into this country and the variance was 1.3 billion in 2019 and even under COVID is 759 million. We could do better than that but because of COVID we know definitely that from 1.3 billion if not COVID we would have doubled it to 2.6 that is the economy that we were running before the COVID. And through a Greek sector. I have a great news for you, but the man says, please, let the world market himself, itself tell Ghanaians. Great news. First in history. What we have done. Maybe by September, you will hear by September, you hear what we have done in the agri sector. So be proud of yourself that we've done well. You see, you sit here. Anytime there's no food, they will say there's no room for. How many times in four years have you experienced the room for? And still, there's constant food constant food prices i saw some evil man who when they say bonsam one bonsam is not in any way no spiritual lays where bonsam a bogus but bonsam any a man who called women in the room men. Only the king coaching them men. Uh, Wow! This the kind of people we have in this country. When food is everywhere, in 12 months, we have food. It's not by magic. It's by prudent management. And some NDC guys have enjoyed it. I was talking to Honorable Akanda, Akando, and he said, Oh, Honorable, you praising Ibrahim now, everybody wants to go and buy Jata cement. Praise me small because my rice. I'm producing rice. And I'm saying, I said, Oh, I'm Mom Kakreni. We did them who said, Da, then I go there and talk about it. But the good thing he said was that, My brother, I produce between 600 and 1,000 tons. Yes. His challenge is that, ask him, why is it that the local rice is more expensive than the imported one? Then he said, which is true, that in advanced countries, developed countries, they subsidize the farmers, but here we don't. And he made one important thing. If you don't tolerate your opponent, you wouldn't know certain things. When talking to me, he said, and it's true, that the subsidy they give it to the small, small farmers, 10 bags of fertilizer. And they can produce 4 or 5 bags. Or 1 ton. The big farmers that can drop 
or bring prices down, they don't get any subsidy. That is why his rice is expensive. Yeah, no subsidy. So engaging in conversation with him, mm, I said, ah, my young man is making sense. So I've spoken to finance minister, say, let's look at this. This is what the gentleman said. Okay. He's NDC, but he has here, 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 no politics. That is why he called me. He respect this brain, and I respect his brain. So when he made that contribution, I went to minister and said, look, let's look at this thing. Because if somebody can produce 1,000 tons, and you are not giving him subsidy or help, our prices will never drop. And people, demand and supply and cost, will let them, the poor people, who buy the cheaper things because, Charlie, all I want to feel in my stomach is that I'm full. Yes. So if your local rice, the argument they make is baseless. Your local rice is 350, the 50, uh, 50 kilo bag. The Indian ones and the Chinese are 250, 270. So the difference is either 90 or 70 Ghana cities. So it's put on it for me, the consumer, to go and buy. Simple. The cost of local rice is more expensive than the imported one. And looking at my pocket and what is in, I will have no choice than to go for the imported one. By choosing to buy the imported one, I am knocking the Ghanaian business out of the business because their product will be there, get spoiled, and nobody will buy. This is a sin dumping, basic principles of economics. I say don't be economics. Simple. So the gospel according to Ken is that. Make your farmers comfortable. And your trade surplus will triple. That is where you get your money. When there's less stress on the dollar, you can sell it cheap for people to buy and do other things. So, we are doing very well. Let's go to health. Health. We sit here. I'm in parliament for 20 years. This term will be 24 years, which I'll call it off. You know. In 2015, we were there, young man, when they brought these ambulances. Empty. They were empty. You know how much it cost? Those empty ambulances that they brought was seventy-nine uh, thousand dollars each. And there were no accoutrements in the in the ambulance. What do we see today? That within four years we were able to import three hundred and seven ambulances to help. That Dr. Zakaria or whatever should be fined. Yeah, using national ambulance to carry cement. He can give me any excuse from heaven. He has to be fired. That is the only way we can fix this country. Because <clears throat> anything goes wrong in MPP, they will blame Ekufuado. So if your drivers are using it to carry cement, do I know any driver? I don't know the drivers there. I'm not Dr. Zakaria. He has to be fired. <laughs> yes. If you really want to fix this country, he should be fired. I have information. When I was going to U.S., a lady, a frantic call came to me, and the lady was saying, that, oh, my long lady is seriously sick. We want ambulance to take her to 37 military hospital. The driver is asking for 300 Ghana cities. Yes, I wish. 300 Ghana cities, ambulance, are binding Isikakoto. And those guys are well paid. They are well paid. Even when they were in training, they were receiving 1,700 each. Yes, I took two guys, so I know. They are well paid. Another story, he said, when they got to 37, there was no bed at the emergency ward or whatever. So they couldn't 
remove the woman and the ambulance operator said if he's going to leave the structure for them they have to pay another 350. <laughs> now the question is not the money it's not the money what about if you get another call to go and pick another patient which structure are you going to use you know we should not just consume information we should always digest that is why i digested the, the uh, dr zacharias uh, excuse that uh, they took the ambulance was 40 and they took it to i asked a simple question how long has the ambulance has been here how long has it been here is it part of the 350, uh, 307 fleet are you saying the ambulance has been there for one year six months please tell that to the dogs we are not kids so it should be fired right away 307 ambulances then comes to the famous that small disease eh? how that small disease has exposed the so-called superpowers COVID <laughs> COVID has exposed America has exposed Britain Germany all the superpowers COVID are almost small <laughs> yeah pandemic I would have agreed with anybody saying COVID um, fix it if we are not under pandemic that I would agree if you tell me to fix it it's not a bad thing but this pandemic every country is suffering you should listen carefully so that when you go you tell friends brothers and sisters parents that are complaining that there's hardship I am telling you I'm just coming from America the hardship is everywhere you know the trick I was watching TV the news and they were exposing the supermarkets you know what they do now if this phone mine is Huawei don't laugh at me <laughs> this phone this size is thousand cities now they reduce the size and still sell it at thousand cities so when you go and it's in the bag you will not even know that it's been reduced just to make their money in america of all people I like scones. Scones, I don't know how to describe it. It's like cake. You have raisins, other granules, you know, the whole foods in my area in West Orange. You go there, scones, $1.50. $1.50. This time, I went there. I'm going to buy scones. And it's $2.50. And it's so flat. <laughs> Yes, I couldn't buy scones. I said, ah, how am I going to pay two dollars fifty? I'm used to the one fifty. That is the situation. My daughter graduated from Cornell this last week, Saturday. The condition is that two people can come. Myself and the mother went. Second condition is that you need to have your COVID test. Whether you are fully vaccinated or not, you, be, you should have your COVID test. You know how much it cost me in New Jersey? $165. I have my receipt. How much do we pay for COVID test here? As a Ghanaian. Now, I have to say, 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 Economics one, history one, <laughs> BK one, we have four ones, and a two, three, three, biology seven. Give me that. Draw your note with Timmy Babo. Let me cry hard. My classmate, I mean, I got a message from him that he's in town or London. He actually begged me to go and write. I didn't want to run in biology. That's why I respect medical doctors and those in the sciences. And they, you know. Now, we took the 
test on Friday. Went to Cornell, Ithaca on Saturday. I'm coming back on Tuesday. So the 72 hours, I have to go and do another test. You know how much they charge me? The same place I went there. I said, oh, I was here. Yeah, we have you on our system. Okay, I'm going to, I'm coming to do the COVID test again. Are you traveling? I say, yes. No, the bro will be technical. You will me. Uh, PCR. I said, what is PCR? I just did this on Friday for 165. I said, no, you are traveling. You need PCR. You know how much PCR costs? $200. <laughs> Yeah, I have my all, all my receipts. I had to go to London, from West Orin to London, to do the PCR test for two hundred dollars. And you see, when you get Ghanaians coming from outside, they get to the airport and they want to throw their weight about. You pay two hundred dollars, and when you get here, they ask you to pay one fifty. You got a problem. You have a problem yourself. <laughs> you are not telling the whole world the truth. Everywhere, COVID has exposed the developed countries. How much more? We, the developing countries. Let me give you some statistics. It's just here. Debt to GDP ratio that my colleagues on the other side are talking about, that our debt to GDP ratio is 76.5%. America debt to GDP is 98.2 percent. UK debt to GDP is 100.98. Japan about 20 years ago they were the richest economy. Debt to GDP in Japan is 367 percent. Debt to GDP Italy 137 percent. Debt to GDP Belgium is 98. Debt to GDP Portugal is 167. Okay? France, 101.3. The only country that beats Ghana is Germany, 62.1. Germany is 62.1 debt to GDP. Debt to GDP simply means that in a whole year, in a whole year, what the government goods and services, value of goods and services in the country, if it is 120 million, America is telling you that their debt is about 116 million. So they have only four million. If it is Japan and it's 120 million, it means they are around 500 million against their 120 million GDP. So Ghana, if it is 100 million, it means we are 76.5 million. You still have a room? Of what? 24.5. Can you compare that to 98.2? That they have 0.8. And they are 100%. They are debt to their GDP is. And France is over. Portugal is over. Italy is over. Spain is over. Belgium is 98. My brother, we are not doing badly. Clap for Kufuadu and uh, Teleforiata. They've done well. And you know, most economies, in Europe especially, I have the Germany chairman here, they have not even opened the economy fully. Canada is still closed. One of the richest nations in the world one of the best managed economy in the world is Canada. Today, there's a shutdown. And when you get to Canada airport, to quarantine, you pay 3,500 Canadian dollars. At 2,000. And if you refuse to quarantine, they give you sermons of 3,500 Canadian. Is that what we see? 
I, I saw, saw a pastor talking about how I'm in London. The system is working. That we preach in the system, we're gonna have work. We will preach. Relying on God for everything. You have forgotten yourself that your preaching is also the part of the system. Why it is not working. That they go there. Even what he was describing. Ghana started as far back as March 20th, 2020. That when you get to the airport, they quarantine you. Before you go home, they will test you. My daughter's came. They were Kempiski. You have to test them again to make sure they are negative before they were allowed to come home. Those who tested positive, they visited them, checked their contacts, the people, and also tested those people. This is what the pastor saw in the UK and said the systems work. When we, the great Ghana under the Kufuan, we know what time it is. We started March 2020. And you will stand in London uh, doing your exercise and the system is working. Stop preaching bogus day to us so that we use our brains to work and not rely on God for everything. But I have created you in my own image. Ask yourself every morning when you wake up, look into the mirror and ask God, is that the image of you? <laughs> yes. Before you start going out there and challenge God that you say that you have you've created me in your own image, then let me see signs. Let me think. And let the system work. It's as simple as that. So if the system works, Tell them you are here. This opportunity for you to go and answer them. It is not only two-way street, husband and wife, government and the people. The people also obey the laws of the country. That is why the systems are working. So as a pastor, a priest, preach for your members to abide by the law and stop stealing and rely on God by chanting you are crazy don't speak it in tongues you are crazy go and work I'll tell you the truth I work I bust my fucking head here thinking I'm going to make money and create jobs for the youth my steel plant, minimum 1,200 Ghanaians are going to work with my day. This is how I'm thinking, my head. My wife keeps telling me, please, you haven't failed, you're going to die and leave this. You have to stop thinking. I am thinking because of you. I feel so guilty standing here as a politician talking to you. We have done a disservice to the youth of this country. Why? My daughter graduated on Saturday from Cornell University. Tuesday, she started working. And you, what have we done to you? What is your faith? That is why you hear me screaming at these politicians who don't love the country and they think of themselves. We have to create jobs. And if you can create jobs, I'll tell you, Religion is impeding progress in this country. Religion is impeding progress in this country. They don't allow us to think and use our brains to work. We are over reliant on God for everything. If God wanted us to rely on Him like that, He would have created us just like the birds who will not plant anything and do anything. Fly in the people, go and eat, and yes, go back to sleep. But God created us as superior human being over his all, all his creation. That is why he gave us this. We are not being allowed to use our brains to make the money. 
Yes, so a Hunyadia and Yahoo. Read Ecclesiastes 10 19. I say, food is for laughter, wine is for merrymaking, money answers it all. Yes, so anybody who will tell you, and I will pay scattered up, and I will pay with them, hey. Hey, we are going to die one day. That's no question about it. But if you have money and you are sick, some sicknesses, money will save you easily. I have a friend who had COVID from Holland. He, he, he was from Holland and had a deal. Not that he doesn't have money, but he came for holidays and he got this. He needed 22000 for oxygen. If I had not paid him, you would have died. So money can give you oxygen. That, that is what COVID at least has taught us. So let's work. Take your destiny into your own hand. And sky is the limit. You got to work. Work. And what any man has done, you can do it too. It's just a question of time and determination. Whoever thought can I upon that poor soul from a sin dumping? Today, when a disco guys hear my name, they applaud. That's a great guy. I was not born in a rich home. No. You got it, boy. Yes. A poor soul like myself, today, you wasted all your time just to come and listen to me. Look, you can do better than me. You can do better than me. Is just determination. Irrespective of the family you came from or you belong, your determination will change your life completely. And I tell you, the right word, I'm not going to use it because they may misquote you. But I tell you, my philosophy to survive in this country. I went to America, they were asking me, how did you make it? I said, in a society with a bunch of ignorance, the few wise men succeed. So be among the few wise men and carry the fools along. And some of the fools will change and emulate you and will deliver this country. That is it. That is it. So don't be shy of Ghana. It's a great nation that is between you and me that can make a difference. That is why I'm here. I wouldn't have come back because we were late. But I said, look, they look up to me. Let me share this story with them. We want to see that one day you meet me somewhere, that town will be old. Say, Honorable, you used to be a Sin Central MP. We met at Nat Hall. He said A, B, C, D. I used it. And today, here I am. I'm somebody who thinks of my children's future. I'm somebody who thinks of the future, the future of the youth of this country. It is not my selfish interest riding in Rolls Royce. What? With all this, what I've said still is vanity. Yeah, I've said all this. My Rolls Royce, I think for the past five years, I've not even started the engine. Now I hear when they going, we were going to start it, it didn't start. But I bought it just to make a statement. That I said, don't be Mr. Mama. So, ladies and gentlemen, what the foundation we are laying is determining or going to determine the future of you. And with this foundation, we are praying that COVID will end it this year and 2022, 2023. You see different economy that will shape your future, that will shine your future. I was talking to the president, I'm saying, Mr. President, you have taught me something. What you have taught me is that if a man is determined to achieve something with perseverance, he will achieve it. That is why, irrespective of the criticisms of the free SHS, you believe in it and had faith, and it has worked. Now, 
your next step is industrialization. Because it is the industries that will create jobs. So 2022, you see the number of companies that will spring up so that we can absorb students that are coming out of college. Because if my daughter should finish on Saturday and Tuesday as a job, and I have a lot of applications, parents are breaking their walls, begging me, or their children begging me to get them jobs, then I ask myself, what kind of politician I am? I'm not able to make a difference. My daughter says me, Saturday, graduated from Cornell, and Tuesday, Tuesday is when she's working. I have to do the same as a politician before I die. All I need from you is long prayers, long life. My ambition is to at least create about 50,000 jobs as a man before I die. Now I've done maybe 10% of it. And when I go, my happiness is that I go to my site and see people working. And I say to myself, wow, come here, Japan. Fumpa, and then you have all these workers working for you. Aqua Borom, but I'll continue to do more. So, my message to you is that MPP has laid the foundation for you, for your future. It's up to you to take advantage of it. Criticize when it is necessary to criticize, don't lament every time. Use the lamentation to be great. Create something for yourself. And one day, you'll be someone. God bless all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't do better. I think he deserves a standing ovation. Tescon. 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, I went somewhere and he didn't let the people with the one with this is 10,000 for snacks. All right, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, our father.